In one of my previous videos, I tried to figure out which car is the fastest in a Seto Corsa competition. This was done by putting a stationary car at a fixed point at the longest straight in the game, which is Paul Ricard, accelerating down the straight and the moment the car left the track, measuring its top speed. Now, there were a few problems, such as the acceleration under low speeds, which easily triggered the traction controls and therefore manipulated the end results a bit. Another thing was the different shifting points in different cars. And this is what we are going to focus on today. So I tried to do my research as good as I possibly could, but I really wasn't able to find the perfect shifting points for each car in Assetto Corsa Competition anywhere on the web. So I spontaneously decided for myself that I'm just going to do my research on my own and do some experience by myself. Now, if you're only interested in the end results, you can skip to this time frame. Otherwise, I'm going to explain you how I conducted my experiments so that you can judge the seriousness of my experiments by yourself. But before we start, I just want to explain a little what we are really looking for in the upcoming numbers and graphs. So to get a car moving, you need two things mainly, an engine and a gearbox. Now the gearbox should have different gears and each gear has a different gear ratio. So the engine basically does only one thing in its whole lifetime. It revs up from its idle RPM to its redline or short before. And that's exactly where the gearbox comes into play, or rather one gear comes into play. If you put your car in gear, let's say the first gear, it puts a little bit of load or rather resistance to the engine, which the engine eventually should overcome. So as the engine is revving up, your car also accelerates. Now to do that process as efficiently as possible, there are several gears. The lower gears are mainly for accelerating, while the higher gears are mainly for maintaining speed while also accelerating just a tiny bit. Now there is one point between two gears that determines when it's best to shift up. Where this point lies becomes pretty obvious if you look at this graphic where the speed is on the x-axis and the acceleration in G's is on the y-axis. Now in this case the perfect shifting point for first to second gear would be right about here. But what if I told you that there is yet another graph which essentially displays the same but the lines in the graph never cross. The question that immediately comes to mind now is well if the lines never cross when should we shift then? Well this is pretty straightforward. You just shift as closely to the red line as you possibly can. But enough theory for today. I am now going to run you through an example and show you how I got my numbers. So here we are now in the so-called Motec simulation software, which basically allows us to read data directly from a set of course of competition and analyze it in a professional environment. So everything you see up here and down here is basically just me doing my testing labs, which is also indicated down here in the bottom right. So the red dot is my current position on track and this itself is the track, obviously, right? So what we are looking for right now are the numbers in G for the acceleration, which are displayed here in this little window and more importantly, up here. So what I did was to ref out every single gear of every car on this thread and then I locked down my acceleration in G's. Now basically what this looks like, let me just reduce the speed of the playback first, is basically if you look down here, the blue line is my current speed that I have on track, right? So every time it dips like this here, I've just hit the red line and as it starts to rise again, I shift it up. So basically all we need to know is the g-forces right 
before we hit the red line. So in this case, if you look up here and I hit play, it's 0 0.13 G, 12 G. And now I'm about to hit the red line, right? And the other number we need to know is the G forces when we start in fifth gear. And these are about 0 0.21 G, right? So the one thing I have to look out for now is the numbers of RPM when the acceleration in fourth gear equals 0 0.21 G. And this right there, not this, a little bit earlier actually, this is too early, so let's run forward in time. So about here, about 7k RPMs per minute is your perfect shifting point in this case. So before I present to you my conclusions and my results, I just wanted to make clear that for every car I did about 3 laps of testing and the results are based on the average values of RPMs and Gs I got in my Motex simulation software as I explained before. But here you go, these are your results. And there is just one tiny little thing that I want to mention. And this is basically just for every car, the higher you are in gear, the earlier you can shift. So for example, if the shifting recommendation is about, let's say, 7k to 7.2k RPMs and you're in second gear, you want to orientate yourself towards the 7.2k, while if you are in fourth or fifth, it's probably better in terms of power output and acceleration to shift at 7k RPMs. So yeah, this is it for this video and now I'm finally able to do an improved version of the which car is the fastest in the set of Corsa competition 2019 cars somewhere in the near future. But if you happen to enjoy this video and probably got something useful out of it, you can consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, I will catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.